All right, I'm excited about this video. Um, this is a project that's been in the making for quite a while. About two years ago, I went to a teacher conference and uh, uh, another teacher of mine, his uh, brother-in-law had this project that he had come up with and uh, it was really cool. It's uh, what they call a persistence of vision wand. And uh, persistence of vision is when as you move something across, uh, as the lights blink, it's almost magically write something in the air. I don't know if you've seen clocks. Uh, they make clocks that have a thing that goes back and forth and you can see the time on the clock. This does the same thing, but what's really cool about it is you can program, uh, program it to say whatever you want um, up to uh, 60 characters so that uh, you can have it say anything. Um, I wouldn't go that high because it's kind of hard to read that many, but the, the, the fact that it's capable of doing that is really cool. Um, the reason it's taken me so long to do this is that uh, I've been trying to help get the price down. And this is what the, it used to look like before uh, we started working together. Um, we were milling it out with a CNC mill. And the, the problem with that was it was taking forever. So uh, we found a company and they were able to etch it for us and put this nice coating on the back so it's a lot easier to solder and just much better for a, a classroom situation where kids are just learning how to solder and you won't have the the solder jumping from pin to pin as easy as the old one so it's been upgraded and uh, works a lot better so what we're going to do is make a quick um, video showing how to assemble it how to make it work how to program it, and uh, hopefully you'll see the advantage to this and uh, try to buy it. What we're going to do is, uh, for educators, um, we'll probably put together classroom packs, uh, 32 kits, and uh, charge around $175, which will be about uh, $5.50 per kit which I think is a really good deal. Um, before we started etching it, it was about $10 each. So, um, yeah, it's been a big improvement. Um, so, you, to get that price, you have to order the 32 pack. Um, for those of you who are not educators and you just want to buy a single pack like this, um, probably end up being about $8 because, you know, there's lots of labor and putting it together for one person and sticking in a single envelope and mailing it out to you. So um, if you want one just for one person, it'll be $8, but you can buy in bulk 32 at a time and make it a lot cheaper for a classroom set. Okay, to put it together, the first thing you want to do is lay out everything. Make sure you got everything that you need. Um, you're going to have two momentary push buttons and you're going to have seven LED lights. You're going to have seven 180 ohm resistors, you can have this little mini slide switch, you can have this 18 pin socket. What that does is you solder that in first so that you can then plug in the programmed microcontroller. This already has a program in it to make it work. And then we're going to have our battery and our battery holder and then of course the board. All right now, when I solder the first, what I like to do is put in the components that are sitting the lowest first. Okay, so the first thing you want to solder in are the resistors. Okay, and if you look at the the one that we're that's finished here, those resistors have to sit in between all the lights. So you got to make sure that they're sitting all the way down against the board. Okay, so I'm going to bend those wires down and put those in. So that they sit all the way down against the board. Make sure that they're touching. Okay, go ahead and put all of those in, and then we'll start soldering. Okay, after you get all the resistors in, turn it over. I've bent the wires 
sideways a little bit to keep the resistors from falling out. Um, make sure your soldering iron is nice and shiny. Um, you can put a little bit of solder on there and clean it off on the on a wet sponge and then it's ready to go. Um, make sure that when you're soldering you're touching both the circle going around the wire and the wire itself with the soldering iron that way both are heating up. Get it a little bit hot and then put a little solder in there and it's ready to go. Just keep doing that all the way across and we're making progress. Alright, after you get those soldered, go ahead and uh, use some pliers and trim off the uh, extra lengths of wire before going on so you don't have a big jungle to uh, have to go through to solder the next component. Alright, now that the resistors are in, I would do the, the buttons and the switch next. Um, the, the buttons on the new one are a little bit different. They have four pins instead of two. That makes them a little bit uh, stronger. So, but the problem is the pins are uh, bent. So we're going to have to straighten those out. So just take some regular pliers and just crunch those down so that they're straight. Okay, after you've done that, then it should be a lot easier to get it into the holes, okay? All right, the buttons, they do matter how they go in. They're, if you notice, the, uh, the pins are closer together on one side than the other, so make sure you put those in the right way. Don't try to bend them out weird to make them fit the wrong way. Okay, it is going to be slightly challenging to get those in there because the holes are just barely big enough, but it is possible, so keep trying to get it. You may have to tweak the, the legs a little bit, but... Alright, I got all three of them in. Make sure they're down as far as you can get them, and uh, yeah, so now we need to solder those ones. The next step would be to put in the holder for the chip. Don't solder the chip, just the holder, okay? The chip will just slide right, in, right into this. Okay, now this actually has a little notch in it right here, and that the, the notch in this will help you later know which way to put the chip in. So what I would do is put the notch towards the number one, towards the buttons, okay? And uh, it might be a little bit challenging to get every single one of those pins in at the same time, but keep at it. You'll get it. Okay, after that's in, turn it over, make sure it's still sitting flush, and uh, start soldering that one. Make sure you don't let solder bridge the gap. If solder goes from pin to pin, you're going to be in trouble later on. But this green coating is supposed to help prevent that. Just work your way down. Alright, next I'm going to do the battery snap. Make sure you put that in the right way. This part that uh, pokes out should go in. Just put that in there and flip it over. And we should be ready to go.
Okay, next are the LEDs, and the LEDs are very important to get in right um, because electricity only goes one way through an LED. And so if you put it in backwards, you're just going to stop it from working. Now, if you look really closely at the, the legs of the LED, the shorter one is negative. Okay, and, and we put on this board a negative and a positive sign here. So you want the short leg to go in the hole that has the negative sign right above it. Okay. Also, if for some reason the legs get cut, on the LED itself there's a flat spot and that flat spot also tells you which side is negative. So either way of figuring it out works. But if, if these haven't been cut, use the shorter, shorter leg method. And what you do is you just put it in there like that so that the shorter leg is again under the negative. So slide it in there all the way down so it sits flat in between the resistors. And go ahead and do that to all seven. Okay, now I have all of them flush sitting in there. Do a quick look and make sure it goes long, you know, short, long, short, long, short, long, all the way across before you start soldering and then just go for it. This will be the last thing we solder. Alright, all I have to do is cut those off and we are ready to put the chips in. <clears throat> After you, you have finished it, go ahead and uh, put the battery in. We haven't put the chip in yet. Just put the battery in there and make sure that you uh, turn it on first or this won't work. Gotta have power. Put and the, the instructions tell you how to do this, that comes with it. Put the wire in pin number five, and the numbers on here help you out, so one, two, three, four, five. And then touch the wire to pin nine, and then 16, which is right there, and then 15 there. Skip 14 and go to 13, then 12, right there. So they all work. If, if they don't come on, then something's wrong in your soldering. So Once you know that it works, we can go ahead and plug in the, the circuit. Right, now, the circuit has a notch in it. Make sure the notch and the chip it goes towards the battery. It should also line up with the notch as long as you put the notch in the right spot on the holder there. Now sometimes the uh, pins don't line up perfectly and you'll need to kind of push down and bend them on the table. Move that out of the way. Just push down on the table and kind of bend them in slightly so that they will line up with the holder a little bit better. Okay. You want to put them all in at the same time. I'll turn it off when I'm doing that. Okay, now it's all in. Turn it on. And the, uh, the lights should all be going. They should be slightly flickering because they're actually turning on and off really fast. Okay. And uh, we'll have to go into a slightly darker room to show you what's happening here. Okay, now I'm in a dark room. I'm going to take the wand. I'm going to wave it past the camera really quick here. What you should see is ABC. Okay? It's, the lights are blinking so that as you go across, you see the ABC. If you go slow, 
you won't see very much. If I go the other way, it goes backwards. So going the right way, it shows the message, and it's really cool. So I'm going to show you how to program it next. Okay, the really cool thing about this project is that it also teaches binary. Okay, the binary is turning is just using ones and zeros to uh, communicate, and uh, computers use it for everything. So it's good to know binary. And uh, as you go down the chart, it increases. This is the number one, the number two, three, four, and five. And so A is for number one, B is for number two, C is for number three, and just continues on all the way down to O, and then we have P, Q, R, S, T, all the way to Z, and uh, just keeps working its way across. We have uppercase and lowercase letters, then we have numbers and some you know, exclamation point, and so on and so forth. We'll probably have a few more things added in here. These are the old instructions, actually. So. Um, here we have the kit ready to program. The way to make it work to program it is you have to have it off to start with, then push one of the buttons, it doesn't matter which one, just push one of them and turn it on. And you'll see the lights do this Knight Rider uh, thing going on there. If you don't know what Knight Rider is, look it up. Okay. <laughs> Um, now, it starts out with the first light on. That's because the original message was ABC. So it's, it's looking at the first letter that it was programmed to say, which was A. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to program it to say my name. So I want to change that one to B. Now notice out here it says change and accept. So I'm going to hold the button down, just push it once really quick. Now notice that just that light on is on and it matches with the B. So that is for B. Now I'll hit accept. Now it still says B, but that's because it said A, B, C. So now I gotta change this B to a Y. Now instead of going through and pushing the change button a whole bunch of times to get to Y, uh, we made it so that if you hold down the button, it'll skip to the next section of the chart. So I'll hold it down and boom, it just changed it to the letter P. So go Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, and then Y. So now we have Y. I'll hit accept. Now, notice that says the letter C, which is what it originally was, but I want it to be O. So that would be the letter D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N. Oh, yeah, one more. That's Actually, right. I want the letter R. Oh. <laughs> I'm misspelling my own name. You, you lose track. <laughs> so I want the letter R. <laughs> anyway, so there's P, Q, R. I'll hit accept. Now notice there's no lights on because it hasn't been that position hasn't been programmed yet. Now I want the O B Y R O. So I'll keep hitting change till I get to the O. That is I J K L M N O. I'll hit accept. And now I want M. So I go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M. I'll hit accept. And then I want to hit change until I see no lights. So as soon as you're done programming the, the, the message, make sure you're on end and then push the button. Okay, so now that I've accepted the end, I turn it off, and when I turn it back on, it should be uh, showing Byram. Now, instead of just waving it with my hand, be, the best thing to do is to make something like this. Now, this isn't going to be included in the kit, but you should be able to make this fairly easy. Um, just a piece of wood here, 
and you can get a, a paint stick or cut some scrap wood into a length like this and then we'll just attach this onto here like that okay and then we'll use a rubber band to hold it in place I'll probably get another one up here too. Alright, now let's go back and check it out. If you want to see it yourself, you can uh, uh, spin this while looking in the mirror, but you have to spin it backwards uh, than, as, than you would for showing it to somebody else. So make sure you're spinning it the right way. And there you see my name over and over again. So as you can see, if you, if you had a message that was 60 characters long, it would take up the, the whole circle. So it's kind of cool. All right, just so you know where to get it, um, you go to www.chinchillasoft.com. Okay, so here it is right here on the board in case you forget. Um, we'll also write it in on the, on the comments too. So. Um, that's where you go to, to get it. Uh, there's also you know, a couple more things on that site. Um, if we come up with anything new, we'll let you know. And um, Hopefully you'll enjoy this project. And uh, I'll write up some lesson plans that go with it. And uh, this should be a really good learn. This should be a really good learning activity for a classroom to do.